Welcome back to another episode of Creative Mood. This week, I sit down with Freddie V, the front man of the band Freddie V and the Foundation. Um, I have never met Freddie before. He was referred to me through a mutual friend. And I must say that I was very happy to have that conversation with Freddie today. He is amazingly insightful and generous of his time and he is equally as talented. Uh, we are going over all the songs of their first EP, and I gotta say, it is funky. You guys are gonna love this, and you should absolutely check it out. Also, Freddie recently launched his own podcast, and I wanted to give him the opportunity to talk about it here as well. Um, in that sense, me and him share some ends because we both have the same desires with our podcast to reach our community and to give a voice. And I think it's important that we talk about that. And I hope that you guys will listen to the end. Um, I hope that you'll go listen to their record and listen to his podcast called Gimme the Check. Um, I'm a little too hungover to keep talking, guys, because last night was Mural Festival's opening night, and uh, your boy got turned. So on that note, you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next week with the special episode with my girl, Pony. Freddy. Yeah, we're on the click. <laughs> Man, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Sasha. Appreciate it. I've spoken uh, to Angelina, and she speaks so highly of you. Mm -hmm. And then I looked into your stuff, and um, it feels like you have so many interesting and beautiful things to say. And it's always nice to meet people like that. Good respect, bro. Thank you. Um, we're going to get into your podcast. Okay. But I definitely wanted to get into your music first to give people listening a sense of uh, what you do. Right on. I think it's really funky, and it's really cool. Good respect. And... Um, Let's just get into that right now. This one is called Give Me the Check. <laughs> Man, this must be insane live. Yo. This must be a party. Yeah, live it's... Ugh. I have to contain myself. <laughs> Which just made me feel like, oh man, I'm gonna have to come and see you guys live. Man. As soon as possible. That's where we were born, man. Like, Do you have any gigs coming up? Well, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say uh, some of the it's one gigs, of those. but Perfect. you know, yeah, Fair we enough. got something uh, coming up in September for sure. Freddie, where are you from? Well, I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. in the DMV area. Okay. In the States. But uh, my parents are from Senegal in Cape Verde. So okay. the whole story about how like my family arrived in America was that like my dad was in Senegal as like playing a whole bunch of like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, no and way. he was just the Americana, like going crazy over American music as a kid in Senegal. Wow. And so he got a scholarship to UCLA. Wow. And then so he landed in UCLA, wow. like lived on the same dorm room floor as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So wow. he was in UCLA like during that whole entire Kareem Abdul-Jabbar run or Luau Cinder at that time. That's crazy. And yeah, so that's how like my family like arrived in America. And then he moved to Washington, D.C. and then had his kids. And then that's, that's pretty much crazy. how it happened. Yeah, man. So I did my first like, you know, my, my childhood in, uh, in, in D.C. and then uh, came up to Montreal like for college, you know, when I was 18. So it's no surprise that you're a musician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, for sure. Wow, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, the foundation, mm -hmm. your band, are they all in Montreal? From Montreal? Yes, the foundation is a, is Montreal based. They're all guys okay. that I met here, and you know, from the, from the come up, like you know, we played so much in different projects coming up together, and then just finally right. decided to do this. Sick. And how long has the foundation been going on? I think I can say like officially four years, but like in another official capacity, like at least the core of the group has been. I guess in each other's universe for about a good decade, you know, whether it's um, oh, wow. playing in different projects. Uh, about half of the band 
we were in this like disco 70s review. What? And we used to like tour North America <laughs> and stuff like that. And you know, a lot of us, and no we learned way. so much from that like experience of just like touring, playing funk, playing Earth, Wind, and Fire, and, and, DGs and you know what I'm saying all types of stuff and learning that catalog like crazy and wow. I think that like it's like okay we learned a lot from some of that experience and brought it into the group for sure I bet like that's like the golden era of music right <laughs> no matter what yeah 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 that's crazy yeah. I did not know that you were in a review doing funk songs that's amazing yeah um yeah because this band this sound again it sounds fully formed Like, there's nothing, you know, it's, I never take that for granted when I listen to artists. When I think about myself, I don't even think of myself as fully formed. I, I hear the evolution, not to suggest that there isn't in yours, but it just sounds so, boom, this is who we are. <laughs> That's great. Like, I think about things like that, and it's like something I strive for, you know? Respect, bro. Um, so how many people are in the band? So we're seven. Like, it's drums, bass, guitar, uh, two keyboardists, Whew. and then uh, the the songstress, Mel Pacifico, who's just, yeah, okay. and, and myself, you know, so as a group, we're seven, and um, and that's what's cool about it, as, as having a bigger band, yeah. two keyboard players, you know, we really cover luxury. a lot, yeah, exactly, luxury. That's, that's a luxury, Come like, on. people look at us, and they're just like, oh, Freddie, god damn it, you <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to? I was like, I, I, yeah, I'm just I'm so fortunate for that. Is and, it like um, that whole? Uh, is there enough sense kind of thing? Oh my god! When those two, when Calder Nash and David Oze of Freefa start nerding out, like like straight up, we'll be in rehearsal. And then, like, they'll start going into Qbert mode, you know? Yes. And then we're just like, okay, guys, like, we'll give you guys 15 minutes to kind of, like, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> start flirting Indulge. and dating. With synth, synth flirting with each Sick. other. And then, and then afterwards, we come back in and then, like, just, we're like, whoa, what is this sonic scape you guys came up with, you know? Um, you, you sing, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, do you play any instruments on these things or are you really focused on being the front man? Well, um, when it comes to the composition... I definitely have um, my hand in, in, in the composition. Sure. F my instrument of expression is bass. Uh -oh. Like, that's when I grew up, I was in, like, in all my high school bands and garage bands coming up. Like, I would play bass and sing at the same time. And then, like, I got to Montreal, and then I kind of saw, like, I don't know, I think this city is kind of really blessed in terms of, like, the amount of bass players per capita <laughs> in Montreal is pretty impressive. Like, it's like, like I can, <laughs> I got about, like, seven d dudes on my in my phone right now that can just, are world class, you know? And um, so I was like, okay, let me just focus on my day job and sing, you know? I appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, <it's> like, <laughs> that, that somebody from D.C. goes, uh, that that make me realize we're blessed in bass players. Yeah, we're blessed in, no, for real. You know real? what, I'll take it, I'll take it. Yeah, man, I'll take like, it. let's take it, seriously. <laughs> like, and, and different styles, too. I think Montreal has, yeah, I can... Like a lot of good bass players here, for sure. So yeah, it's just really focused on the singing. So for me, when it comes to uh, laying down certain parts, like for example, like uh, the song "Your Own Way," that's a bass line that I came up with. Like we got off the plane in Cape Verde. Me and Calder were in the studio. We had something, and I was like, "Dude, just put a kick and a four on the floor for me. Give me the bass and let me do this." Sick. And it is just like the song came about, whatever. But afterwards you see guys like paul Sh charles or emil farley or some of these amazing bass emil players farley, that kind of yeah. that rotate around my universe and it's like to kind of be able to say hey yes i composed this part yes i can do it but i have a yeah specialist i have an assassin <clears throat> right next to me so maybe put that in his hand and see if he can Absolutely. take it to the next level you know so a lot of the times it's it's a it's that um I played some percussion parts, right. little guitar parts here and there, right. things like that. So that's really fun, especially on "Give Me the Check." What's really special about that is that whole uh, bottles, and like in the studio, we like literally set up three different bottles and measured the water inside the bottle okay. to make sure <clears throat> yeah. that it's yeah. the right note and the right. Tone. I have never done that, but I want to do that. Oh one my day. god, that was so fun, man! Like just doing live percussion in studio. That's that was one of the funnest parts of this album. I always, well, you know, as the outsider, I always mm -hmm. felt like. Um, And this is just goes to show how little I know, but it feels like in the states, everyone's like a killer musician, whereas like here, I feel like everyone's leaning a little too hard on the rock. 
That, yeah, oh, that's, that's funny. That's because this definitely the is a is a big uh, rock and alternative city and whatnot here. Right. But there is that musicianship, and that's the you know. And for me, I always say like, if you want us to talk about like you know musicianship in Montreal, especially like in my my ecosystem, I gotta give it up to what I find is the backbone of a lot of black music in Montreal, which is the Haitian gospel community. Right. And if it were not for the Haitian gospel community, like my original music career or even any other type of musical career would not be where it is today. It would not exist because it's always the backbone of the groups, drums, bass and keys. It's like these guys are so killer and they're coming out of church. So because they're coming out of the gospel right. thing, right. they right. know how to play every single genre of music like Ronnie our drummer like not only does he play for Jire gospel choir cali technus yes. other people like that but you know it's like he played for like michel pagliaro which is yes. literally like the <laughs> rock old school reference, rocker yeah. old school rocker <laughs> of quebec you know what i'm saying and it's like yeah because he has the vocabulary alive. and you still do it i know the fact that you're still alive and still doing it man testament um, this song just a fish is <laughs> Dude, what is this? What the hell? Where are you? Like, I, uh, this is it. Beautiful, beautiful voice. Bro. Thanks, bro. You have. Wow. It's just. I mean, I don't even want to just sell it. Like, I just want to tell you. I think you have a beautiful voice. And you know what you're doing, and you've surrounded yourself so well. Like. Beyond being good songs, this is just good music. Thank you. And it's it's like it speaks to me. I, I feel it, you know. Um, Thank you. <laughs> how long have you been singing, actually? Um, I think I can say a good 15 to 20 years. Okay. Um, it, I'm from a musical family. Yeah. So I think the. The most important thing to say is like I gotta give it up to my brother. You know, my brother's 10 years older than me, so okay. imagine him being 16 years old, bringing his high school friends in into the garage, into the basement. Me sitting there at six years old yeah. and waiting for them to take a break so that I can go and touch every single instrument before they got back. No way. You know, and growing up in that rehearsal environment is the backbone of my musicality yeah so from there um being in school choir i also got to give it up to like my choir teacher my choir director because yeah we're all doing it but he just saw how in i was and how fast and he taught me how to read music and vocals okay. and and you know took me to the side and really like put extra love and extra time into me you know what i'm saying and so um that really did it and then besides that dude i was in every single musical competition dc go go garage band funk band rock band jazz band i was just in it you know what i mean and like starting to front those groups you know but really like exercising those chops and um also like i did musical theater and uh, that's not like something that in my adult life that i went to i was, like, kind of had to step away from that world but i cannot deny what it gave me I like bet, man. Being I bet. on stages, like, you know. It's really putting yourself <laughs> out there. And in that's like every a, way. Yeah. Choreography with body, singing, yeah. speaking, projection, um, having full confidence in every single aspect of your physical art and how you can uh, express that. Musical theater did, did that for me. Now, that, I believe, because I see you in. I've seen your video podcast, I've seen your live performances, you're sitting in front of me, I'm listening to you. It's absolutely part of your story. It, like it, you are just comfortable, you're in it. Like, and you, I, I, I believe that too. You know, musical theater. It's just something that like you can't stay within yourself when you're oh, doing no that. Way. You have to be out there, and it's the most extra art. Form. Yeah, <laughs> like, extra, it's absolutely. So extra, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's just it, 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 you have to flex every single muscle. Yeah. But every what a great. Muscle. What a great experience to have if you're going to be a front man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that know? definitely, man. That is a huge part of I got to give it up to that. I um I dated a classically trained opera singer. Mm -hmm. And same thing, you know, she was doing theater, opera, and it's just like maybe not as intense, but in, in many ways intense as well, like mm -hmm. and it was just the same thing when she would perform and sing. It was like she wasn't just singing. She was 
fully in it. Yeah. And that's something that、um, I also admire, and I'm like, oh man, like, I'm gonna have to cross that bridge eventually、Ooh. of like,、um, physically being present in my performances. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I find that、um, anytime that I speak about this and stuff, I. I We have to bring the French to. I don't think that in English there's an equivalent of the word that there is in French, and in French is、uh, interpretation. You know, in English you can say, yeah, I interpret the song, but it doesn't. It doesn't have the same depth that when and the significance that it has in French. You know, in French it's、uh, the English is singer songwriter. You know, in French、yes. it is a chanteur, auteur,、uh, auteur, compositeur, interprète. interprète. And what it is to literally interpret the composition, creation, and、yeah. copyright. Is a completely different muscle than performance and execution. That's so funny、know? that you just made me realize. In French, there's an extra word. There's an extra word. Yeah, singer songwriter in English. Wow. Auteur comp-、uh, compositeur. Auteur.、Oui. Interprète, meaning that I not only am the author and composer of it, then I must get my ass onto the stage、That's、and、so、interpret、funny. that and be theatrical and make sure that the audience understands my. Theatrical performance and interpretation of this piece. I'm、know? gonna have to think about that when we're done this conversation. Why is that like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, English does not. It doesn't have the weight. It doesn't have the equi- equivalent of it. So whether we get into per, you know performance coaching, performance workshops, and all those these little things that I that I、uh, used to get into before COVID, and、um, <laughs> you know,、Whoops. yeah, that's that's really what it is. And getting people to really tap into every single muscle, every single aspect of their body of Their voice and activate、yeah. and really connect with an audience, and that's it's、sense. hard to do, man.、Um, your own way.、Hmm. Now, I want to ask you、um, about the recording process,、mm-hmm. the writing and recording process of this song.、Um, how does a typical session start with you guys? Is it really like bass, drums, and you build from the ground up? Is it like a, a live setting? Yeah, it's it's it's. Yeah, I'm really happy you you asked that question because、um, I kind of realized that you know my story goes from being a solo artist, this is Freddie V, with a dope ass backing band, right, to being like, okay, guys, like this, like what are we doing here?、Mm-hmm. Like this is too special. Like we can't just act like this is a solo. I'm a solo artist and whatnot,、right. and you guys aren't adding to what's going on. We're arranging together. And also, I told them I was like, half of you don't have SoCan accounts. Half of you guys play for the dopest acts in the city and in the, in the, in the country,、Ugh. but y'all ain't composing and creating and writing. Where's the intellectual property, guys? We need to create. And so that's how the、yeah. foundation formed. You know, it was like、right. you know, these side men, these these first call musicians. That decided, and who don't need to do this, who decided that okay, let's do a band, like let's、mm-hmm. own something, let's do something for ourselves. Yeah. So that's the first thing. So I was like, okay, bet everybody's down. Yeah, down. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. I was like, fuck, how do? I... Okay, where do I start? <laughs> you know what、yeah. I mean? Because usually it's just me and one producer, we and one beat maker, me and one, you know. Yes. And so、um, I decided to call、um, Louis Stein from Busty and the Bass. Yes. And I was like, bro. So I just realized I just started a band. <laughs> I'm no longer still a little. I was like, when it comes to the the diplomacy and the creation, like, how did you guys go about it? And this dude was like, Oh my god, I'm so glad you called. Like, here, and was just like an open book. And he was like, Bro, like, just bring in some food. Yeah. Set the band up. Yeah. He's like, put two condenser mics up, and go in. He's like, That's great advice. He was like, ninety percent is gonna sound like ass. Like ninety percent is really gonna be. I don't even know if I can curse. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get yeah, you can do it, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But, yeah, he's like ninety percent is gonna sound like shit. But that ten percent is gonna be gold. And、absolutely. then that ten percent, that's what you take and that's what you produce. And I was like, I think I'm gonna do exactly that. <laughs> I was like, thank you very much, and I pretty much ran with that. And so yeah, we just man, it was like dumpling sessions. I'd bring in dumplings, yeah, to conduct some microphones, and we would just go in as the group. And then listening back and listening sessions, and that's when we would just really much identify where the gold、What、was. Works,、yeah. And then from there, you know, sometimes it would be、um, like you know, for one step, for example, it would it was not even from like it was during a break. Okay. Like David plays keys or whatever, but then he got on a on the MPC. And sort of really playing that pocket, and then the bass player jumped in, and I was like, "Guys, I'm like, this classic, is it!" And I was like, "And he, they're like, 'What are you talking about?'" And then I started like, I was like, "No, no, no, that, that, that." I was like, 
and didn't even realize like the genius that was coming there you know and so yeah. and that's kind of like my job you know is to to be ready to, to be, be ready and yeah. to, to to get out the way when it's time to get out the way absolutely and then when it's in so like i said my job is to identify your genius absolutely. so sometimes things would go and i'd be like this is it guys this is what it is okay cool like can we add this type of texture here da, 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 you know so the You're musicians producer, can have man, fun sure. actually delving in and finding what it is and really really doing it so i'll usually ring the bell and then i'll start kind of arranging when the aha moment comes in yes and i'll be able to kind of move from there and then when as soon as like that jam is done then it gets into sound design mode and that's when yeah. when calder and david you know really in terms of um the drum programming and um, the synth sounds, you know, that's really important for us, you know, making sure that that is super, that, that those are like the pillars of the production, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then from there, man, everybody comes in and tracks on top, but Got the basses, guitars, you know, and then vocals on top. And me and Mel after that, vocal production, we just take it to the side sure. <laughs> with the writing and really sure. meticulously go through every single vocal arrangement and part and then come back and then put it all together. The, uh... I really appreciate what what hit me when I listened to your songs is how the balance between the music volume and the voices volume. Ooh. It's um, very, very even keel. Respect. Like it doesn't overpower the music. Yeah. As sometimes, well, that's not a diss, like it's just a choice. Yeah, it's just you a know? choice, yeah, exactly. Uh, and for myself, sometimes I'm like, oh man, like it's just a little too loud. Yeah. Because there's something really amazing going on behind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it sucks when it's the opposite, when the music's a little too loud and you're like, yeah, but what's... Yeah. And and again, you've managed to find like a great balance. And I want to backtrack on something you said. Because I start with sound design most of the time. Yeah. So you actually, because it's a band and there are individuals and it's like this communal effort. Mm -hmm. So you guys will start, you'll set up, you'll start writing, jamming, doing things, bringing ideas. And it's interesting because then you said, then we get into sound design mode. Mm -hmm. And um, in my entourage, that is absolutely not something that is um, done a lot. Mm -hmm. It used to be like that when I was in a band, yeah. you know, and uh, that's, I, I, I miss that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss that aspect because now it's like I spend so many hours trying to get a sound. Got it. And it's like, what am I doing? Ooh. You know? um, oh, that's, a, that's, that's a very interesting conversation indeed because it's, and me, like, because I come from, I'm a hippie. Like, sound design is new for me. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, arrangements, playing, whatever. Like, what, what you mean, sound design? Your sound design is supposed to be there. That's you know the sound. Mean? It's already But there. it's like, you know, the guys are like, Freddie, please stop being a hippie. Please. We're in, it's 2020, Freddie, please. Like, listen, like, like right. we, we're not moving if the kick ain't right. Right. We're not moving if these drums ain't slapping the way they're supposed to be slapping. Mm -hmm. We're not moving until that happens. Well, and it's, it's like, hard. and I'm like, got it. Yeah, okay, that makes sound. And then, and then you understand when you when you have you know the privilege of sitting next to a synth keyboard player and really witnessing the process of how he gets that sound. Yes, it is ah words you know and first i wasn't even hearing some of the changes and then and then right. because you're around more then your ears get you're better and better and better and then you're just like wow okay yeah. uh eq uh filter cut filter, off yeah, cut, absolutely. trail uh you know what i'm saying <sighs> yeah. phase all oh, right now like i'm just i'm such a nerd for and that's the thing and now because they spoiled me now with the next record like you know, I'm kind of bougie about it. I'm just like, I don't think there's enough phase around. They're like, oh, shut up, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you just brought the uh, mini move? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not the uh, Prophet 8? Well, whatever. That's cool. I don't need exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, I'm, like, I'm like unfazed. And they're just like, <laughs> we created a monster. You know? But uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge because um, I used to, you know, I come from an environment where I used to jam. And that's how I used yeah. to write with the guys. Um, but then I had to learn the hard way that um so i'm gonna lay down these like really shitty um like i'm gonna record stuff and it doesn't sound well because i'm Ooh. just trying to capture the idea yeah then i fall in love with the idea mm -hmm. and then it's like sasha you you know producers and songwriters would tell me you built a whole song on a drum that doesn't sound good mm -hmm. so going back and changing the sound of the drums mm -hmm. You're essentially changing the sound of everything, everything else. Yep. And that's when it kind of hit me. 
I was like, oh, I have to be methodical. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. So a lot of my time now is spent sound designing mm -hmm. and saving stuff in my computer. In the banks, yes. exactly. So I have a synth uh, bank of patches that I created myself in Ableton. Dope. Same thing with drums, same things with whatever. But that took me years yeah. because it's long yeah. and it's not the creative part. It's creative, but it's not in that like musical, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. not writing songs. Yeah. But now I've reached a point where it's like, I have so many sounds that I made that I can just pull them up, but it's that's the process. Yep. And I miss the immediacy of your music, of the way it just it happens. People are in a room and it sounds like it. Yeah, and, and that's the and you know what? It is so I think what we just broke down, these two kind of chapters, these two kind of aspects of the entire process is it, it's hard to get both. It's really yes. hard to get your, Absolutely. all right, being in the room and capturing that magic of composition, writing, and arrangement. And just yeah. that, and not even just worrying about it, souls, okay, what are you playing, whatever. And yeah. then, like, once that's done, being able to do. So I think that's pretty much how we were able to execute this project by by separating those, those two processes, right. by allowing the composition thing and, you know, letting magic into the room letting god into the room letting you know that type of thing and then also giving a moment where everybody can just move away and be like okay now that we know what the song is and whatnot now that's time to produce and that's what production is is really with the sound design and let's just make sure that we get the exact sound for every single instrument of this composition of this arrangement you know what i mean that every every part deserves love you know what i'm saying yeah, like absolutely. you know what i mean like, no, 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 no parts of that process are looked over exactly you know, brushed over rather exactly you know even like for this song i could be for example like just the synth work here you know just this, how much time they went into woo, like just to get that pitch bend yeah to start at the right point and to be the smooth right enough, note like, smooth yeah. enough consistently not to move too fast at a certain point it's, yeah. it's oh my god like it, it takes a lot it yeah and it's lot. not particularly fun when you have like six other people and it's like we understand that you need that time yeah and that, you know yeah so it's 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 diplomacy it's like love it's like you know, understanding yeah, yeah, yeah but it's also like other people are like i got momentum right now what yeah, the hell yeah, are you doing yeah. uh, i just want to take a moment with this song for a second mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful music, man. I respect. It. This is. Ugh. Do you know MC Originate? I do not. Okay, because um, I think you guys should meet. Okay. I think you should have him on your podcast. Okay. Um, he is my brother from another mother. Okay. He is. Um, that's his vinyl up there. Okay. Uh, did you ever hear of Mofac? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so he um, he plays in a band with Mofac. Okay. And. Um, you would just, I, I'm telling you this on air, like you're gonna love his uh, music. I'm pretty sure it's so. amazing. And uh, you're, you guys are kindred spirits in that sense. Really? Absolutely. Hell yeah, man. Um, it's, I think it's a matter of time before you meet, anyways. Okay, okay, okay. Right on. Yeah, Mofak uh, definitely uh, DM'd him a couple of times because right. he lives in Marseille, yes. and I, that's where all my family in France is. Right. And I told him, I said, man, I said, the day I get there, fam, you please reserve a little four or five hours for me. Please. Man, you guys have to work together. Man. It's going to be amazing. This guy is like, something else, I, man. Hearing your voice, hearing what you do, and knowing what he does, man, like it's just waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I can't wait to get to the other side. Man, this song. And um, because I haven't looked deeply into it, because I wanted to ask you, um, how many songs, EPs, or albums do you guys have with the foundation at this point? This just one. This just one. This is our first. Right on. Yeah. And um, now that the pandemic is sort of like entering phase something, something, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what are your plans? I mean, of course, you know, don't speak on what you don't want to speak Ooh. on. But like, I'm assuming that now, like, you can get ready to make more music, perhaps. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think uh, no matter what, yeah, more music is definitely coming, and us being artists and trying to push that is um, 
it goes without saying, but that's the mission. Uh, yeah, I think what the pandemic has allowed us to do is to structure ourselves, mm-hmm. um, to understand that you know being artist is one side of it, but the our story is really of this EP turned us into producers, right? Like we are live cats Mm -hmm. we came from the stage we came from open mics we came from jam sessions we came from uh playing private events and parties and covers and and 70s reviews and touring and you know i mean with different artists and stuff like that like we are live cats but you know to sit create compose and produce and whatnot and now like not with some big producer who Mm -hmm. came in producing it yourself this is us you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying like so um yeah, we beca- we became producers, and so now that like we're Sick. producers, freedom. That, that yeah, and that's the thing where content creators are, were were able, we're autonomous, mm-hmm. and we're able to do that. But also the structure that that comes with, and yeah. handling the business aspect of it, right? And making sure that everybody has representation, that making sure that everybody is protected, making sure that we have an umbrella that we're working under, that we have our own platform. So pretty much like the i love to hear you talk like that man it's important oh it's really important especially in these days because that's the thing it's like the pandemic was so validating because i looked at the band and i was like guys like what do you do and i think it's probably an important aspect of my story that i should probably tell you is Please, on your yeah. project if i don't Absolutely. but um in 2014 i had a crazy health incident that long story short um i had an abscess in my brain i had a sinus infection that turned into an abscess Really? That as soon as it hit my brain, I was on tour, and it short-circuited. So I had, like, this huge seizure, followed by three brain surgeries. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So me being here right now with all of my faculties is a bit of a miracle, you know what I mean? Sure. And that's kind of was a huge spark in terms of, like, I was like, okay, I got to do this for myself. I, I'm going to leave this earth without my albums, without my legacy, you know what purpose. I mean? And, yeah, that definitely gave me drive and purpose. Um to start stuff and then so when I was you know talk to the band that way I was like yeah I went through this life changing experience you know what I'm saying and like you know this is why I have this urgency we we should do something like for us and for ourselves you know and not just leave this earth and having nothing for ourselves you know and so being able to do this band and like write and create and do that like that's like the first level and then what I told them I was like what happens if something happens to your leg I told my drummer that mm-hmm. you know yeah. And what happens if somebody gets sick and you can't tour? Like, we have to be on stage in order to make a living. You know what I mean? But to be able to, like, give ourselves some type of security, residual income every three months off of copyright, something that you're created, you did. So, like, we got an opportunity to be uh, the house band for a talk show on uh, Radio Canada. Right on. And so we play our own music on TV. Right on. Man. So That's amazing. it's like, and so the band started understanding, you know what I mean? how that's a sweet gig how yeah man that that really was a a huge another big basis of like that what um made us do and why we're here today you know because it was like okay producing for tv all that and that's how we're like okay we're ready for this now now you know and yeah and so it's like the importance of copyright and the importance of writing and the importance of becoming producers it's called the music business business, exactly and then so i say this we start the band we create it we finish the album right when we finish the album pandemic hits all live shows suspended and i was like guys if this is not the most validating thing i don't know what is Mm -hmm. because i told y'all what happens if you can't be on stage anymore now we can't play live we can't do it but you know what at least we have something we're freaking out all all type of stuff but you know what we're sitting here with a mixed and mastered album we have something of our own yeah yeah, 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 so, absolutely. And that's what got me through this, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. of having something on our own, you know? And so it's like that I find was like a very important like shift for us, you know what I mean, in terms of going from really talented musicians individually, side men working together. To something, to the sum of band, all your parts. Yeah. To a production team, you know Amazing. what I mean? And that evolution is like is, is happening right now, you know? Freddie, that's really beautiful, man. I, I love having those conversations, man. And thank you for being so open about all this. Like, it's important that we talk about this exactly. stuff. We spend so much time just moving air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Like, yes. And that's, I can never press my guests to mm-hmm. speak this way. 
but it is the, the purpose of it in the sense of like you know we're just we don't know each other yeah. we just met and we're sitting down and that is the common thread between you and i regardless we're musicians we're artists yeah and we are living those things exactly and it is important i feel so many musicians unfortunately it's a beautiful catch you know if you're a businessman because it's like this guy just wants to play bass <laughs> <laughs> you know and it's like man like we're being um they're eating us alive in that sense you know like the game is tilted not in your favor as yeah. a and it's it's not even so much about being business oriented as it is about like you know knowing your worth yeah. that's the bigger conversation and, and, yeah exactly you know? and it's so funny and it's just like and i find that like you know we've been kind of taught or conditioned as artists and musicians or whatnot of certain things that i just don't think serve us anymore and um like what pretty much like you know um you know uh music and business don't mix Um, you know, there's 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 that Those same. Old I'm, always, I'm, I'm always by the art. Um, starving musician, um, yes. having having to 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 know the blues, mm -hmm. and you have to be in the blues in order to 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 live this. You have to go through it mm -hmm. in order for your music to have value. You yes. know what I'm saying? And so we have kind of this almost like psychological thing of self-sabotage because mm -hmm. we're under those conditions of, okay, we have to go these things, go through these things and, and be separated from the business and whatnot. And what I try and tell musicians today is just that just because you are um, being responsible and accountable for whether it's the financial, the business part or the entrepreneurial side of your music of your does career. not make you some type of capitalist or or you know what i mean and and, yeah. when, and that i think is the thing and people see it as a black and white and two different things absolutely me what i tell people too is just like i'm like guys like you know i'm senegalese i'm from west africa so i'm sorry you're not going to tell me that like you know the concept of money and business came with corporations and, and europeans and americans i'm sorry like it's about being a craftsman East Africans were trading with Indians way before colonization, way before, and, and there's no different. The carpenter wakes up, he has his van, he has his business card, he puts his phone number on the side of his van with the website so everybody knows where he can reach him. He comes in, he has his accounting, he does his taxes, he has his receipts, and he has his tools, and he goes to work. And there's no The blacksmith, the same thing. And it is no different for a bass player who's a side musician or a producer who should be responsible for his copyright and know how to register his songs with SoCan or ASCAP and PMI and all these, that, it, that is the equivalent of us Absolutely. being a craftsman and owning our own minivan and doing those things. So nobody's telling you to out here to be, to go out and become, and become a, you know what I'm saying, the head of Cash Money Millionaire Absolutely. or, you know, all these type of, it's not about that, but it's about being a craftsman and owning your crafts and if you do not pay attention to that side of your craft someone else will take care of it for you take care of it for <laughs> yeah, you. yeah exactly absolutely. you know what i mean so it's yeah. best for you to actually to take care of that i so agree I'm, with you a hundred percent that's what i'm trying to pass to musicians and even in our band like you know real talk we're having a lot of conversations about that Great. because what how do you tell musicians that really don't need to worry about that like you know because their phones are ringing off the hook hey can you come here hey hey that's you're great. temporary and you're solicited you're solicited and i'm just like for now that's for now yeah that's nice yeah yeah but what happens when this that 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 and what do you have for yourself at the end of the day you know what i mean and i think that that was the motivation for a foundation because there was just like they understood that we have the ability to create this space physically and philosophically for ourselves and that serves us and even when we're long gone our children or if we can't legacy we can't hit on the thing we have this we have potential for legacy freddie i b before the song ends This song is super funky. <laughs> like this, this reminds me a bit like of that Mofac thing that we right? were speaking of, <laughs> and originate that I was mentioning earlier. Like these are hard songs to pull off. Man, I cannot play this stuff. Man, no, this is this is keyboard. No, this is Cal Calder Nash. Calder Nash really. I have to say, 45 is is a is a special baby in the song. Like. 
like the rest of the album was really came from those jam sessions. Everybody came and kind of came in and whatnot. And um, I don't know if we just he just played it for us one day when we were at the beginning of the jam session or he sent it to us. Okay. And then me and Mel just kind of sat back and we're like, okay, no. I was like, I know this did not go down the way that the other songs went down, but bro, you put your foot in this so hard. Uh, I was like, go ahead. I said, lead it. I said, go ahead and lead this. Lead, this, lead this track, man. You know Yuck. what I mean? And like, make it happen. And then, um, even writing wise, you know, and <laughs> I got to call him out, Calder, you motherfucker. Like Dude. he, this song was the biggest challenge for me writing wise usually i usually know the zone and i'm a visionary about what the track is going to be about mm -hmm. and i understand and even if they're things to, to to kind of arrange is whatnot mel and i rewrote the first verse to this song okay six times uh, calder was... made us rewrite it six times yeah <sighs> mieux. i think there's better i think da 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 rhythms man he's like the rhythms he's like it's like oil and vinegar right now like it you know what i mean like oil and water you know and, and i was like god damn it but i told him you know, i was like i was like i have i need to be challenged this is what i want and I i'm usually, say, the, and you took I'm that usually the leader of the things and i'm kind of pushing people i was like and i told him i was like i'm in your hands mm -hmm. push me go for it and if it's not there i can take it go and he did and he went in on me and he was just like yeah dog again i'm sorry you know but this is my baby and we're really close like it's not mm -hmm. bad but it's just not the thing you know and then when i came in with spotlight is shining on you he was like oh here we go here i we love go. your um openness and your you know your experience it, it it shows the way you're talking about it like how many times have we been in situations where like ego will get in the way and it's so unfortunate you know and mm -hmm. i and full disclosure growing up i went through all those things myself mm -hmm. those experiences of not knowing when to shut up not knowing when to speak up and i learned mm -hmm. i'm 33 now and i feel so much more at ease mm -hmm. with like in a situation where it's like okay I usually like you said i lead in this and this and that but like now i'm wise enough now to know the benefit of letting you take me to a place I'm reluctant to go somehow. Exactly. <laughs> and and the breakthrough lies there. Exactly. A place you are reluctant to go. Right? Because that's the thing. If it's like to 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 trust. It's all, a trust. lot of it is, is is trust. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then once you trust somebody like Absolutely. that and then you let that person know just being like, you can take me somewhere that I would not have gone myself. Mm -hmm. Um I want to step out the box. I want to do something that's, that's not thing or whatever. Guts. And it, it takes guts and it takes trust and it takes, you know what I mean, being in that place. But yeah, and that's what I told him. I was like, dude, if like after close to 10 years of like kick all different types of stages and studios and projects and da, 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 that we can't look at each other and be like, and go there. Yo, take yeah. it. So like yeah. when it's time for me to take it and really like musically direct the band and get my kind of James Brown direction on, Calder's like, go. You know what I mean? And when it's time for Calder to be like, yo, okay, there's these parts, there's these patches, there's these sequence, how to split the keyboard parts and whatever, I'm like, go. And I need to sit down and shut up. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, like, that's, yeah. and everybody having their role mm -hmm. and those roles kind of being identified and each person being empowered in their role. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. so, you know, that's, that's a, that's a really huge thing. Man. It's when a it, big part of the yeah. whole process, man. I think it's cool that we talk about this because it's, it's almost obvious to, you know, speaking of it seems obvious, mm -hmm. but so many times you're in situations where you're like, oh, yeah, man, come on, man, give it up. It's, it's, yo, it, growth it's, is right around the corner. It's the, the, the coexistence and it's team building. And honestly, like, yeah. I like, you know, this is something that I really like sat back and I looked at my, I had to look at myself as a leader. I had to look really in the mirror and be accountable and understand like the things where I can improve where I had to um, grow and develop as a person yes. before I can even attempt yeah. to do this and bring people all to the same plate into the same table and be like, let's eat this food together. Let's yeah. eat, let's create this food. Let's cook it and let's eat it together. Being you know? a leader is not just telling people what to do. Exactly. It's man. being that person yourself and knowing like, absolutely, of course. Yeah. It's, 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 it's such a growing experience, you know what I mean? Like, and I've learned so much about myself. I learned so much about my teammates, how we, how we challenge each other, mm -hmm. um, you know, psychologically, you know, and even in terms of like, you know, 
I, I'll, I'll be very honest, like straight up, like we're having some some conversations now that are so deep and so real where it's just like, I tell them, I'm like, you guys are so great. Like, I believe so much in like your potential. So when I see something that's like a, a limiting belief, something that because you don't recognize your own greatness, I'm like, that frustrates the fuck out of me. Right. You know what I mean? And that's the only time where I'm going to get kind of frustrated where it's just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. I'm like, nah, dog, you're a producer. You're a vocal producer. You're yeah, a yeah, ranger. Yeah. You're, we're, not, we're not trying to do this or like, or we'll cross that bridge when we'll get there. Nah, we're here. Yeah, we're doing this we're now. We're doing this, y'all. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And like, and so. But that's sort of an, a, a, you know, that's an attitude people have or don't have in life. It's an outlook. It's yeah. a way of thinking, you know? Yeah. It's not always it evident to to be that way you know like um, leading in that sense is almost something that you have or you don't mm -hmm. and clearly sitting in front of you I, I just feel it through talking to you in your presence like it's you obviously know how to surround yourself mm -hmm. and um, you guys are just delivering the goods <laughs> um, I want to mention because this is the last song mm -hmm. fungi yeah. fungi 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 <laughs> it's the only instrumental track yeah now there's always a story with that. Mm -hmm. Why is it the only instrumental track? And why is there an instrumental track? What's up? <laughs> ah, What's funny. this song? It's funny because um, I Could Be and Fungi came out in the same session. Okay. And um, the band actually first was thinking about going back and forth between I Could Be being like a verse and then okay. Fungi kind of being like a chorus or vice versa within the same right. song. And I was like, oh, I don't like the way it comes back into the sections. And I was mm -hmm. like, I think each thing is a, it's its own separate stuff. And they're like, okay, cool. So each separate song, all right, guys, go and write to this and come okay. back. And we're like, all right, cool, bet. Me and Mel are just sitting there. We're just looking at each other. We're just listening to like just the track just sounds so complete. Right. The where do story we go? Where do is we take written, where their story yeah. is written and whatnot. And I'm like, we have five dope instrumentalists in the group and we're not we're a band like this is not this the, the brand of the group is, is a band of instrumentalists and whatnot i looked at mel and i was like well, it is what it is it is what it is man. come on man and so we walked in there and the whole band was like yo so we're excited to hear what you guys write so what you what y'all gonna do and i was like not a damn thing and they're like what <laughs> and it was a it was like a mini argument they're like no right oh, and right. i was just like guys i have nothing it's to say done. it's mm -hmm. done and also, I was like, it's it's not just about the decisions that you choose to do or the decisions that are actions. It's the decisions where you don't do stuff. It's yeah. the silence. The, the decisions to be the decision to sit down is as equally as important as the decision is to stand up and to make an action. And that right there, fungi, is the story of the decision to sit down. Gotcha. And get out the way. And the gotcha. vocals got out the way and, and letting the instrumental cause just the story's complete. Also, it's um it's a really good trick because live that gives you a break. Yes, it does. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I know yeah. this. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is the instrumental break. Yeah. Exactly. Go have a beer maybe or, you know, if yeah, you have I to mean, go to the bathroom somehow. And man, I'm going to tell y'all right now, <laughs> Fungi Live, y'all are not ready. It, it, it takes, it really comes to life on stage. Like it's, oh, man, it's something bet. else, you I know bet. what I mean? Because so, yeah. there's not that concern of like um, being not holding back a little when there's vocals you have to hold back yeah yeah, yeah. when there's no vocals you're oh, like oh man and that's the thing and it's just like it's kind of like there has to be a moment in this group where just the band is unleashed yeah for you know sure I mean? for and sure. so that is the unleashing moment live and also i love that sound because for me it's like uh, it represents like afrofuturism yes so the and just that's the thing we do r&b and funk but um the afro element that we're experimenting with that we're bringing with and that really came about with um our trip to my motherland cape verde which you is guys like, all went together yeah we all went to oh, cape verde man. and headlined this show me? out there for a festival what? it was um i'm from there i had never been there dude that is crazy it was like it was such like it was two thousand people on a friday night downtown outdoor show and how just was the doing show? doing r&b and funk in wow. west africa on this island in west africa and everybody just eating it up and what? yeah and just like i was just on the plane ride back we we're just talking so much and we we're just like well listen like we have haitians and africans in the group um 
That's a big it's such line. a big start part of our of who we are and our musicality, and we always feel like we have to be part of a box. Either your R and B or your hip hop yeah, or your yeah, yeah. world or your and we're just like why world, can't I hate, why I hate that term? You yeah. know, and it's like why do we have to be both or anything? And we need to do something to kind of reach back out to our cultures, mm -hmm. but to bring that live band aspect of it and start experimenting with it and bringing it to the future. And so I think that this something with a project is just kind of, that's what's near and dear to my heart that, yeah, we kill an R&B and funk, but that we found a way to bring certain Afro elements and mm -hmm. that this project just kind of represents the diaspora as a whole, you know? Dude, it's, <clears throat> having listened to the whole thing, you know, it's really cool how it's your, there's a sound, mm -hmm. but it's also so many nice colors. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to say before I forget, did you, did you ever see that movie uh, Rumble in the Jungle, I think it was, with James Brown and Bill Withers? Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. They all yeah, go to yeah. Africa, oh, and there's like the Ali fight. Hell yeah, Kinshasa, man, the Rumble in <laughs> the Jungle, man. Oof. Jesus Christ, that thing. Yeah. That movie, like, I, I I think of those people, and I'm like, where do you go from there? <laughs> That James Brown set yeah. was crazy. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And like they're all in the planes and you know, they got like the bell bottom pants, they got like the white leather shoes. Like this, those are the good years. Everyone's looking good. Yeah, it's crazy. Bill Withers in his prime, James Ooh. in his prime. Going to Africa, like what the hell was this movie? Yo, Amazing. On the same tip, um, you should check out uh, the Quest Love Supreme podcast. Oh, I listened to that yeah. podcast. Um, the Bootsy Collins interview. Yes. When Bootsy Collins <laughs> talked about going to Nigeria yes. and the time he spent with Fela Kuti, yes. I had goosebumps because Man, for I me, that was. Yeah. similar to my experience of going to Cape Verde you're right. an American R&B funk musician and although I've uh, you know I, I went to Senegal and Gore and I'm very very familiar with West Africa growing up I would go I had the privilege of going every three three years wow. on average back home and seeing grandma and grandpa you know right but like man going back home from when you're like you know a black or person of color in North America and you go back to you know your african roots or your motherland or your 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 native country be it africa in the middle east or, or asia and you touch back down with the local music and the indigenous music from your from place and, and you understand how that connects with you so just bootsy when he's talking about okay like um james brown said we're gonna have a funky good time this is like that congo makosa type yes. of thing and then they go to senegal and they and they, they go to Senegal or they go to Congo or they go to Nigeria and they hear that kind of pocket and they're just like, we never met, we never heard each other before, we mm -hmm. never think, but there's this thing in our DNA that made us yeah. do something very similar, you know what I mean? And, and connecting on that level, it, it's a spiritual experience, man. That's the beauty of it all, man. Like, you know, we, how do, how do you say that in, in English? You know, it's a little a keten, like, um, you know, they're corny. like corny, yeah. these little things, but like they're not. No, it's, it's real. You know, it's real. It's real, man. Um, I went to, back to Turkey. Sorry, I went to Turkey for the first time of my life when I was 25. Mm -hmm. I had never met anyone from my family, mm -hmm. never been there, never spoken the language. So tr just relating to what you're saying, you know, for me, it hit me when I came back to Canada. Yeah. Like when I was there, I was a little, I don't know, I wasn't able to take it in that, in the same way of realizing how fucked up it was. It was when I came back, I was like, uh, like it's almost like disconcerting how disconnected I feel sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like being close to your roots is, uh, I, I, maybe there's something with age. Maybe when you're younger, it doesn't matter as much. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, but then I was comes. like the late twenties. I was like, oh man, like I feel like I should know more of this stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's some type of calling at some yeah. moment. You know what I mean in your trajectory, and it, you know it goes is up up and down. But you know, having that connection is is definitely a part of our like lifelong the quest. journey and quest yeah. as as children of immigrants. You know what I mean, and. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's before, and that's funny because your own way, as you said, is like when it came, when you came back, that's when it hit you. Your own way is the story of that. Your own okay. way is the story of us coming back from Cape Verde. Okay. So it's like, 
the beginning is this Afro Afro sounding thing. It's just, it, it, you can put that track next to you know a, a burner, a whiz kid, a mm-hmm. Tiwa Savage, a boom, kaboom, with a clave and full clave, and really having fun with the clave and the clave being literally like the DNA of black music you know what i mean yes so oh, yeah if you listen to fella yeah. Kut, it's like clave is yeah. literally like i can go on a dissertation for this but the clave <laughs> is the dna of our diaspora you know what i mean mm-hmm. and so having fun with the clave playing with that doing that and then having this part that's a transition and then coming in with this full r&b funk summer barbecue cookout blending like, everything perfect. and blending everything in this one trip so literally that transition in the middle that Mel is singing, for us, that's literally the flight back from Cape Verde to Montreal and how we felt. And then we just sit, landed in Montreal and we're like, R&B, funk, Afro. We Check. got some for everybody. <laughs> and that's what it, and that's our whole, like, that's like the uh, slogan of our record. We got some for everybody. Like right. you, somebody will find something in our music that will make them smile and make their booty shake. Like, that's... that's Mission statement. What, that is pretty much what we try to achieve. You know what I mean? Sick. Uh, Freddie, winding down, I want to talk about your podcast because Ooh. I want people to go and check it out. Yeah, man. Um, it's called Give Me The Check. Yeah, yeah. And you're interviewing... Well, so far I've seen, like, uh, R&B artists, uh, musicians, mm-hmm. and um, I just want to give you the opportunity to talk about it a little bit to let the people know what it's about, what it's about for you. Why are you doing that? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, pretty much the Give Me the Check podcast is it, it's, a, it's a platform that I created to highlight uh, Montreal's budding R&B scene. And when I say R&B, I try to keep that umbrella as macro as possible because there's a lot of diversity within R&B. Sure. But um, the reason why I created it, I find that um, we don't have a platform like this here in Montreal and in Quebec. Mm-hmm. Um, the category of R&B technically doesn't exist here. Like, and I've been saying this for the past year and I've ruffled a few feathers as I've said it, you know? And they're like, Good. well, what are you talking about? We had Boulevard and we had this and we had that. And I'm like, yeah. but guys, like there's literally, tell me, there's nothing on TV. There's no countdowns. There's no radio shows. There's mm-hmm. no thing or whatever. The only things that we have is CKUT, Weekend Groove. Thank God for Mikey Dangerous. Thank God for us, for our more community-based uh, platforms but that's not and enough. DJs. But that is that is not enough. Um, hip-hop had his its uh, resurgence or surgeons here with Rap Keb, you know. Yep. In the 90s, we had groups that we're doing this, but that weren't really being recognized for it. And then Rap Keb became these things and some of those artists and groups got pushed to the side, although they were the originators and architects of it. Yeah. You know, but today, Rap, they did a good job of elevating the profile of Quebecois hip hop. Mm-hmm. And so the Gimme the Check podcast, I want to show that it's t- time for R&B to have its heyday because we have so many artists that are Grammy nominated, Mm-hmm. that have songs in Netflix series that have been right. mentored by Babyface that have, I mean, that are playing in Lollapalooza this year as an act. Um, you know, we have so much history in this city and no platform whatsoever to represent black music that is not hip hop. You know what I mean? So that's why I started the Give Me the Check thing. And, you know, I was really inspired Sick. by, like, the Talib Kweli podcast, mm-hmm. um, the Questlove podcast, and all of these kind of um, artist-to-artist interviews where yeah. we can really s- dig down and talk about um, the musicality. We can nerd out about the engineering. We can speak about the entrepreneurship and the business side and some of the difficulties, especially with COVID and everything that we go through so we can share and people can kind of listen and look at these and be like, hey, oh, my God, I love Cali Technus. What an amazing artist and whatnot. But, oh, my God, 
she goes through this too. Oh my God, I didn't know that for the cover art for this single that she really had no budget. So she put on like this sheet and clipped it with uh, some pins and got a photographer to come and da 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 and made an exchange. And she told the whole story about how that cover art came and how resourceful she was and how creative she was. And that it's not like all that glitter that you see is not gold. It's like, yeah, okay, wow. Okay, I thought she was like pimping and had all this money to do this. And she that's how she did that cover oh wow sometimes she sits and she had moments where she thinks like oh my god well yeah i was jealous and envious of this person and the the psychological right. things that we go through as artists and how we're like no if one person makes it that we all make it so let's big each other up and whatever mm -hmm. wow kelly goes through that too okay all right well if she can do it then i can do it. and so for us to share our stories you know what i mean yeah. and not hoard our contacts and hoard all of our things so i'm like three episodes in and um, the response has been beautiful. And they're great. And they're respect, great. Man. The, the, the production is great. Um, I enjoyed the man. And I'm so, so sorry to interrupt. No, I no, just please, wanted please. to say that, like, I, um, that's why I want to talk about it. And in, in everything you just said, that is where we share ends as well. You know, yeah. like, I, I absolutely think everything you just said, you know, and that's the reason why I do my own little thing. And that's why I wanted to have you on to mm -hmm. talk about your music and to talk about your podcast because. It is about sharing and elevating each other, you know? And mm -hmm. I think you're doing something important. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want people to go check it out. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, before we end, I don't know if there's anything you want to announce, add, or say that maybe I have omitted to ask or... Yeah, well, um, I just want to make sure that everybody stays in touch with us. Please go follow us at Band Foundation on every single social platform. It's the same thing, at band foundation and then you can right. also check out the podcast on uh, youtube and ig and it's called at gimme the check and uh yeah we have a um we have a show coming up in september i'll just leave it at that <laughs> we can't announce it but um i think this show will definitely be kind of like the homecoming it'll mm. probably be like the album the album release that i never had a chance to have right um yeah and It'll be in front of humans, in front of people. It'll What be are those? a big show, 90 minutes, you know. Amazing. And special guests, surprise guests, and all of that. So please, like, tap in with us, ladies and gentlemen, at Band Foundation everywhere. So you can keep in touch. And as soon as that show is announced, I would love to see all of you guys there. Because this music, like I said, man, I'm a live cat. Like, I was born mm -hmm. on a stage, man. Like, that's, that's what I do, you know. That's what I... And doing this album is like the transition of becoming a producer and i'm so grateful for that growth and to have this music but i just want to play it on stage man. like this is this is all i want right now you know so i'm really looking forward to that and uh future shows coming in the fall freddie thank you so so much for coming here meeting me for the first time and opening up like this i really appreciate it and i will be at the show yes, sir. and um go check them out guys have a good day thanks Sasha.